If you try to follow closely the F-35, lots, blocks, technology refreshes and what else, you seriously risk compromising your mental sanity. There is this incredibly complicated system that defines the production standards and it's very hard to follow and every lot, any small variation has its own small changes. And all of this is compounded by the ability of all the parts involved of seemingly divulging a lot of information about the aircraft without actually saying much. Otis, 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 when I was young there used to be version A, version B, version C, or uh, in Great Britain there used to be Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, or in Italy there used to be Serie 1, Serie 2, Serie 3, so that was easy to understand what was going on. Today you can't really tell anymore. When you were young, sir, did aircraft exist? Block 4 software is important because it is considered to be the first fully up to spec block software for the F-35. Anything after that would be an improvement on the original requirement. Not all the F-35s though will be capable of being upgraded to the Block 4 software release straight away because you need the Technology Refresh 3 to unlock the Block 4 software. The Technology Refresh 3 is a hardware upgrade and it will come with its own software upgrade and it will start shipping in 2023 with lot 15. This prerequisite of the Technology Refresh 3 means that there are going to be about 800 aircraft around the world that will need upgrading. And obviously being a hardware upgrade is going to be much more complex and expensive than a simple software upgrade. Some of the early deliveries, about 100, 150 aircraft, are going to be so complex and expensive to be upgraded that they probably will never be. The two largest partners of the F-35 program, Great Britain and Italy, have already announced that they are not going to upgrade their entire fleet to the Block 4 standard, despite the fact that their aircraft are relatively recent. The Block 4 software release is expected sometime after 2025, but according to the Pentagon's uh, General Accounting Office, this plan is overly optimistic. I guess we'll see what happens. However, it is a mystery how such a badly designed program could produce such an outstanding aircraft. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive into Block 4 Upgrade and let's try to dig a bit deeper than the usual. And to be honest, there's quite a lot to dig into because this is just the first video in a series dedicated to the Block 4 Upgrade and the F-35. Warning. This is still a developing program, so the final implementation may change. Even sources dated a few months apart show differences. Humans tend to change their mind quite often. This video reports the information available at the end of 2021. Correct. Thank you, Otis. And please mind that not all the sources do agree. So sometimes I had to make a choice and I hope I got it right. Technology Refresh 3 is the prerequisite to unlock Block 4 software, but some sources seem to say that there are some Block 4 specific, so it's quite difficult telling which is which. However, an F-35 ready for Block 4 software should feature some rather interesting modifications. The current display has been reported to be occasionally inaccurate when used as a touchscreen and it gets dirty easily. The new PCD should address these issues, but there is much more. In the F-35, the computer associated with the PCD, one for each half, actually manage the presentation and the sensor fusion. Their processor will be upgraded and they will receive about four times the computational capability and about 32 times the current memory, which is quite a large upgrade. The upgrade will enable the computers to pick up some additional functions like power distribution, signal traffic dynamics, module diagnostics, signaling protocols and module commonalities. 
the communication navigation and identification hardware is also being upgraded. It is receiving an embedded GPS inertial unit. It is also receiving dedicated video hardware to manage full motion video. Basically the equivalent of a graphic card in a commercial computer. Yes, because video streaming is becoming increasingly important in the current world of network-centric warfare, and these upgrades are specifically aimed at actually enriching the video feeds with other tactical data and relying them to other assets in the area. The electronic warfare system is going to be upgraded, and just few elements are going to remain untouched. Almost all the integrated antenna arrays are going to be upgraded. The two main electronic racks are going to receive new hardware, but it is not clear what they are exactly receiving. Sources say that the upgrade is going to revolve around the controller, the receiver, and the power supply, whatever that means. But this is not everything, because the F-35 is not just a computer. We often forget that there is an actual aircraft around the computers too. While the computers without the aircraft wouldn't even exist, the same aircraft without the computers will still be tactically relevant. Sir, the F-35 is an unstable design. It can't fly without computers, sir. Otis, sometimes I really feel like switching you off. If I was human, I would laugh, sir. Ha ha ha. For the technology refresh 3 and the block 4 software upgrade, the weapons bay need modifications. Yes, because there are many new weapons that are going to be integrated with the aircraft and the first thing to do is making the aircraft physically compatible with these new weapons. We will get back to this in another episode and stay tuned because this will be epic. Ah, and by the way, with all that new electronics, also the cooling system is going to be upgraded. And now, on to the software. So the Block 4, the communication suite, is receiving several improvements. The F-35 makes use of software-defined radios for the CNI, rather than conventional black boxes. These radios communicate using encrypted protocols in the form of specific waveforms. A conventional radio implements this by hardware, which means that inside the box, inside the case, there will be uh, chips and circuitry that will implement one or more of these waveforms. A software-defined radio makes use of generic programmable hardware to transmit and receive, and everything else is governed by software. Now, for waveform, in military jargon, you don't really mean the actual waveform of the signal. It's the complex of frequencies, modulations and encryptions used by the radios or any other systems that uses electromagnetic waves. So the CNI on the F-35 can speak with several different systems making use of these software-generated waveforms. For example, it can communicate with sync guards or have quick radios, but also use the same system to communicate with an instrumental landing system or use it as the identification friend of four system. With the Block 4 software, the F-35 is also adding the Saturn waveform, which is becoming increasingly common in the NATO environment and around the world. In a, you may expect to find it in a coalition environment together with a number of other waveforms. Block 4 software is also improving the Link 16 implementation. It will be adding support for a legacy cryptography module, but also it will be adding the variable message format protocol. The Link 16 is a very common military data link used by most modern Western military assets. It is an omnidirectional protocol and it works in the UHF band which means that it is an inherently line-of-sight data link. And its main problem is that the bandwidth is definitely not great, it is in the order of the 100 megabit per second. If you're watching this, your internet is faster. 
you have to think to the Link 16 as your local area network. Basically the stuff that you're going to see if you click on the network icon in Windows or on the Mac. On the Link 16, each asset, each aircraft, uh, ship or land-based asset is the equivalent of a computer on your local area network. The software part, the so-called protocol, is built to be very efficient and it works exchanging predefined messages among the different nodes. These messages can carry tactical information like a flight path, a readiness status, or the data relative to a radar track. The Link 16 natively features text, voice, and video sharing capabilities. But all of these can be greatly improved by the use of the variable message format protocol. And this is a secure protocol, not all the details are in the public domain, but it is very important for submission, particularly close air support and exchanging of video feeds with the ground troops to avoid friendly fire or just to identify the target correctly. The Link 16 mentioned before is just one of the possible data links available on the F-35. The aircraft features a native model protocol which has been developed specifically for the F-35 and for all the future Air Force platforms. The model has the peculiarity of being very, very resilient to jamming. It features fast frequency switching, a very strong encryption, but it is also a directional data link. And actually, it may seem science fiction, but the beam forming technology that is used on the model to achieve the directionality is pretty common even for civilian applications. Every decent home router has some form of beam forming for being directional. However, the metal is peculiar in the sense that it can manage several beams at the same time and the aircraft can really become a node in a network. This directional data link is a great improvement over non-directional data links like the Link 16 or the future Link 22. It features a larger bandwidth than the Link 16 because it has to support the large amount of data that the F-35 exchanges with the other aircraft. High definition videos, large image files, video feeds, all of this is perfectly integrated in the model. With Block 4 software, the model will receive self-healing capability. Again, this seems science fiction, but is a pretty common technology also used in civilian applications and in space applications. It simply means that if a component on the network is malfunctioning, the traffic that is going through that node is going to be rerouted through a different path to keep the network in operations. The F-35 internal connections already work in this way. If a wire is truncated by damage, the aircraft tries to rerouting all the controls through a different redundant path. In this context though, the self-healing rather means that the model network of aircraft is capable of detecting a hacked or malfunctioning node and is capable of rerouting all the messages through the rest of the network, all of this without human intervention. Another element that is often mentioned for Block 4 is multi-level security. With multi-level security, we usually means the capability of managing two or more different system of information classifications with no leaks and no security concerns. I am not really sure how this applies to the F-35 communication suite, but I definitely can understand that an aircraft which is basically a node in a network may have to deal with this kind of issues. If you have more details, please let me know in the comments below because I will be happy to go back and cover this part. And even more mysterious is the reference in some sources to a non model electronic attack mechanism. I really couldn't find any source describing it, 
but it is a tantalizing proposition. And again, if you have news, please let me know. If you have sources, please let me know. We will get back to this and we will cover it. Remember, the comments below are open to everyone. If you have anything to say, if you have any news to add, feel free, you are welcome. However, if you want to know more about the F-35, there are several videos on the channel and they are going to appear beside me. There is a lot more to cover about the Block 4 release and we will get back to that in a future video. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you there.